Hey friends, in this video, we are going to go over FastAPI and CQRS, where each service has its own unique way of doing something to build the entire application. So I'm going to walk you through commands and queries for us to be able to create segregated write and read operations. All right, so we already have a directory built with a main.py file that's completely empty. I already created a virtual ENV for us to be able to store all the dependencies. And then I have a requirements.txt, which holds a bunch of dependencies. If you want to get this starting project or actually the finished project, you can get it from the link below. But we have a requirements.txt, we have our main.py. And the very first thing we're going to do is just add a bunch of different imports. And we're going to be using all the best practices for fast APIs. So we're going to be using the best practices for dependency injection for startup, for asynchronous databases. Fast API is always evolving and I'm always making sure my videos are following the absolute best practices. And to start with the best practices, when we create our database, I am going to first start by saying async context engine manager. This is a way for us to create startup and shutdown events the best way we possibly can. So we're gonna be using this lifespan and we can see that we're passing that in as our fast API app which is just going to be checking, hey, did this application get started? If so, well, then we need to create our database and tables, which we haven't added yet in the code, but this is what it's doing. We're awaiting and we're going to be running the synchronization. We're going to be using SQL model and then create all of the tables. Now, if you use this code and you want to add any shutdown tasks, I don't have any for this tutorial, but you can add them right here after this yield. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to add here is an async database setup. So we have our database URL. I'm gonna be using SQLite with AIO SQLite, where we're gonna be creating a database called TestDB, and it's gonna show up right here when we run the application. We are creating our engine with create async engine, and then we have our async session local, which is just gonna be creating our session for our database. And again, this engine gets passed in right here, and this is how we create it for our lifespan. Next, we're gonna to wanna to create our models, and this is where CQRS really comes into play. And that's because CQRS really has three separate things. It has segregation, which is the application that maintains clear boundaries between operations that modify data, which is known as commands, and then operations that read data, which is known as queries. This segregation facilitates optimization and scaling of each operation type. And then there's the optimization, which is the read and write operations that are separated. But then CQRS also helps with maintainability. And that's because we are separating the read and write logic. So here we can see that we have our item base, our class item base, which just takes in a name and a string. Our item create is going to inherit item base. So it's going to take in the name and description and we don't add anything else to it. We have our item base. And right here, we're using SQL model to create a new table for item where we have an ID and a field of default none and primary key is true. And then we can read that item. And then for fun, I'm adding a service layer. And the service layer is going to take an item service where we're doing async def create item, where we're passing in all the dependencies that we need, and we're going to be returning an item. And the reason we're putting it in the service layer is to separate the service layer, which is going to be communicating with the database and like, you know, adding business logic in the future with the API layer, which is just essentially saying this is an endpoint. So we're saying this is an endpoint. We're going to be using dependency injection to get the database and the item service. And then we call the item service to do actually the business logic in the database connection stuff afterwards. So we have a create item, get item, um, and then get items. So it's going to return a list of items, a single item, and create the item. We then want to add our dependencies. So we're going to have get DB, which is going to be an async session where we create a new DB of the async session local. And then we try yield finally DB close. So at each connection, we're going to create that connection endpoint and then close the DB connection. And then we're also going to create a new dependency for get item service, which just returns the item service. And that's this class that holds all of this functionality of create, get the item, and get the array of items. We then want to create our dependencies. We have our DB dependency of annotated session, and then we have depends get DB. And then we also do the same thing for item service dependency, where our depends gets the item service. So this is the dependency injection that's happening in Fast API. Then we can call the DB dependency and the item service dependency for actually instantiating the object when the API endpoint is hit. 
So now that we have the service layer, we have our dependency injection, we can go ahead and create our API endpoints. So we have our API layer, which is an at app dot post where we're posting to our items with a response model of item read. Remember we're using SQRS, so it's segregated up here. We have our async create item where we're creating an item. We have our background task and our background task is gonna be used to like log an operation. And then we're using dependency injection for our item service and for our DB. So our created item, which is gonna be a new variable, we are awaiting the item service, what we just, you know, did in dependency injection for. And then we create the item with the item in the DB. Our background task is going to log the item in the ID. We haven't created that yet, but we will. And then we return the created item. If we wanna go ahead and create a new API endpoint that returns just a single item, we can say at app dot get items, or this actually returns a list of items. So we're gonna be doing the same thing with the dependency injection for DB in the item service dependency. And then we're gonna say items equals await the item service dependency injection, which is that item service class, and then get all the items, which is a function inside of it. And then lastly, we are going to create a function for getting a single item. So we're gonna say async def read our single item where we're gonna pass in an ID and then we're going to instantiate the dependency injection where we're going to fetch a single item. And if that item doesn't exist, so we're passing in like an ID of 10 when there, there is no item with an ID of 10, we're just gonna throw in error. And then lastly, we can add that log operation where we're just gonna be simulating a background task or an async background task, but we're really just gonna be logging the operation. If we go ahead and say uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload, we can see that we created our test DB and that's because of our async context manager, which is creating the lifespan for our fast API application. So when it gets started, we are creating that table and we don't have any shutdown tasks. And if we open up our fast API, and we need to first create an item. We can just do this. Name is going to be string and description is going to be string. If we say execute, we can see it went in. And we can see that we logged that event. So logging operation for item ID is one. And that's because our post or create item, it's actually our API endpoint. So right here, our background tasks add task. And then our add task is going to be a background task. And then we have this log operation, which is going to be just be printing this to the terminal. And then I'm going to do this twice, or let's do it like a couple times. So now we have a bunch of the same stuff in here. If we say read all our items, and if we run it, we can see that we get a whole bunch of different items. And then lastly, if we come down here, we can pass in like a single ID where we get four. But if we pass in something that doesn't exist like 99, we get item not found. And this is just a clean way for us to be able to create fast API applications. Now, we could go ahead and put item service in its own file. We could do the dependency injection in its own file, these models in its own file, database in its own file, and really be able to create a scalable fast API application that's using CQRS and just everything is so modular and the write and read functions are completely separate from one another. If you want this code, you can get it in the bio below and I will see you in the next video.